Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Reid, and I'm a naturopathic doctor. And I was recently reading a blog post by this uh, really brilliant doctor, his name is Samuel Yannick, um, and he um, has this company, or he's affiliated with this company called Cogents, and they put out this really great uh, continuing education material. So I was reading um, a blog post that he put out recently, and it's talking all about um, thoughts to consider around dosing for, for different supplements or treatments or things like that. And so anyways, it was really, it was a great post, and it um, inspired me to put this video together, um, just talking about the importance of correct dosing uh, when it comes to working with supplements and medications and things like that. And it, it may sound really obvious um, when I put it this way to say, you know, the, the most effective uh, way to use a supplement or medication or treatment is to use the right dose, you know, of course, um, but sometimes knowing what the right dose is can be a little bit tricky. And uh, to illustrate by example, um, I had, I've had many patients over the years where they'll come in and they have X, Y, or Z symptoms going on and I look at the list of all the different treatments that they've tried, you know, oftentimes having worked with many different clinicians prior to seeing me and I'll see like, oh, well, you tried, you know, this thing and did that help? No, that didn't help. And I find out what dosage they took and I see, oh, the dose was, you know, way too low, at least, or I think it was too low. And not all the time, but I would say a significant proportion of the time, maybe 20, 25% of the time, um, I'll find that there are things that a patient was try had tried working with previously and it didn't really work because in hindsight it turns out that it wasn't the right dose or maybe it wasn't the right timing. Um, sometimes, you know, a good example I've talked about this in other videos before, um, say something like an adrenal support herb, like these adaptogenic herbs like rhodiola or shisandra or ashwagandha. Um, when a patient's really in the throes of illness, they in my experience, oftentimes those herbs don't really help a whole lot. You start getting their mitochondria working better, start addressing some of the root cause issues, get them absorbing things better, and then those herbs can really start to work. And so it just wasn't the best timing in hindsight in those cases. But in, in a number of those cases, it's really been more of a dosage issue. A um, great example would be magnesium. Uh, magnesium is something where it's just one of my favorite supplements, if not my favorite supplement to prescribe, because so many patients benefit from it, can help so much with bowel regularity, it can help to um, eliminate or reduce muscle cramps, muscle spasms, restless legs, sometimes helps a lot with pain issues, um, anxiety issues, sleep issues. So magnesium can just work miracles for some folks. And then for some people it doesn't do anything, but um, it can be really, really helpful. And I've had many, many, many patients over the years, probably over I'd say probably over 100 patients over the years where they've been on magnesium that was prescribed by another clinician or health food store employer or whatever it was, or they just read about it online, and they're like, yeah, the magnesium didn't really help, or it's only helping a little bit. And then we figure out the optimal dose for them to take, which is typically a higher dose, and when it comes to magnesium, and like, oh, wow, that's that's really making a big difference. So the, the um, finding the right dosage is really important. This a blog post that Dr. Yannick put out was ultimately talking about, you know, don't give up on the treatment um, until you've made sure that it's the right dosage. And, and it's really good advice because as I just mentioned, sometimes that's been really important in my practice where it was the right treatment, just, you know, not the right dosage. So I guess to patients listening or, or, uh, or uh, non-clinicians non listening to this, um, if there's a treatment that you're working with and it's not really helping, um, you know, if, when you're following up with your clinician, maybe ask them, you know, well, do you think it's the right dose? And they might say, oh, this is definitely the max dose you could possibly tolerate. Then you know, leave it there. Um, but it, they may say, well, you know, maybe we could try like a little bit of a higher dose before we give up on this and move on to something different. And, and in other cases, um, in my opinion, in my experience, going to a higher dose is just generally not helpful. So going back to the example of those adaptogenic herbs like the ashwagandha, rhodiola, and whatnot, what I found <clears throat> um, from clinical experience is that if, you know, what I've feel as a, a typical like full dose of those, a max dose of those. I've had patients where we've tried going higher and like it just didn't help. So it's very rare that those types of herbs, in my experience at least, help um, if we try to go above what's typically considered to be a full dose. So again, it all, it, well, not again, but it, it really comes down to clinical experience and, and expertise and this and that. And there's just certain things that we learn about and see in practice that can help to inform what the best next step is. But um, sometimes the dosage just isn't quite high enough or maybe, maybe it's a timing thing. So I hope this information 
question was helpful. Um, I'm planning to do more uh, long form videos. I've been posting a lot of short videos because the Instagram reels are just so um, quick and easy to put out there and, and they're, they're kind of fun to do because I have to try to squeeze a video into 90 seconds or less. Um, but I've been doing them quite a bit lately. So I'm planning to do some longer form videos now like this one. If I'm in a rush, because I always record these at the end of my day. Um, if I'm in a rush, I'll, I'll default to a reel, but um, I do plan to do some longer form videos. So if you have any questions about uh, this subject matter or about something else, please feel free to post it in the comment section below. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed to my newsletter, um, please uh, click on the link um, that's below if you're watching this on YouTube or Oh my goodness, what's the other media? Facebook, that's the one. And uh, if you're watching this on Instagram, then you can click on the link in my link tree in my bio and um, access my mailing list. And on that mailing list, I have some free resources on access to the first couple of parts of my Overcoming Chronic Illness course. And then I also have a chronic illness checklist, which basically has a few different checklists to see if there are different conditions or diagnoses that may not have been explored that could help to explain symptoms that you may be dealing with that have not um, already been figured out. So um, please feel free to check out those free resources if you are so inclined. And otherwise, I will leave it there.